in theology, we base ourselves not on human expectations, but we base ourselves on the revealed Word of God, on what God has said. And the priesthood is not a natural human social function. The Catholic priesthood is tied with the unique priesthood of Christ which means that we are not free to uh, invent the priesthood according to our own customs, uh, according to our own expectations. We interpret the priesthood through Christ. And the Catholic priesthood has been instituted by Christ, not invented by the Church. The apostles were not elected, they were not designated by the crowds, they didn't propose themselves, they were chosen by Christ. And he chose men as priests. And the Incarnation, the Son of God, became flesh, but became flesh not in, not in a sexless humanity, but as a male. So this is the fundamental reason why the Church cannot change the priesthood, the understanding of the priesthood, allowing for the ordination of women. Christ was courageous in respect to the local social customs. He, he was not afraid to be countercultural. He was saying things that the, that the Pharisees didn't like. He was, he was saying things contrary to, to, to human expectations. He didn't follow the expectations of the powerful, of Pilate, of Herod. He had his own word, his own mission. Uh, and so the argument that Jesus, well, had to fit into the local culture and so now we have a different culture and so we distort Christianity to make it look like what we are expecting and living out today. Huh? This is a distortion. Huh? And I think the, the Church, by being rooted in the truth that we have received and not invented, huh? the Church is liberated from the slavery of fashion. If we remember that in ancient Rome, young people were never adults so long as their parents were alive, both men and women. The parents, the father, could decide about everything. Huh? Decide about marriage, he could even kill his child. Huh? And in the early church, young teenage girls huh, who discovered Christ huh, and decided to be the spouses of Christ, huh, reacted strongly against the, the dominant culture by saying they will be virgins of Christ and they gave their lives. And between the times of the apostles and the great fathers of the church, we have these wonderful virgin martyrs uh, mentioned in, uh, amongst others in the first Eucharistic prayer. Agatha, Lucy, Perpetua, Felicity. These were young teenagers uh, who said, my husband is Christ and the father will not marry me off. Uh, so this is a, a sign of an, of an enormous dignity of the woman. It seems that women have a special access to the heart of Jesus and access in a very uh, vivid way. Of, of, of approaching him, of touching him, of, of praying with him, of, of pouring ointment on his head, of, of kissing his feet. Uh, so that women have an access to Jesus. And maybe in some sense we could say that in this, women are more apt uh, to draw from the, from the mystery of Christ by the quality of their prayer life, by the quality of their, of their faith by maybe a greater facility to receive the grace of God and to give. But nevertheless, they are not endowed with the apostolic mission that Jesus gave to men. Mm -hmm.